So let's now understand how uh, secondary structure prediction can be performed using the GOR tool. So you go to Google, you type GOR, G -O -R, GOR tool, and then uh, you go for the first hit, all right? which is GOR4. Now, um, there are various versions of GOR. There was GOR1, GOR2, GOR3, GOR4. The GOR4 is the most updated one as compared to uh, the previous ones. All right. And um, GOR actually stands for uh, Garnier Osgutor Robson. Yes, we are getting the name of three scientists that is Garnier, Osgutor, Robson. And uh, these three people came up with this tool which will help us to predict the secondary structure. Um, uh, all right. Um, now you, we saw how uh, your Chow Fassman works. Now let's try incorporating the same sequence, okay, in uh, your GOR, and let's see what different results does GOR four give us as compared to Chow Fassman. I clicked on submit, and then yeah, all right. So I've got quickly got the results. Okay, it does not take a lot of time for it. Mm. Yeah, so this is your uh, query sequence which you have incorporated and below you can see um, that it has predicted whether it is C. So C here is coil. All right. So now let's let's look at this section here. Okay. It's going to give you an uh, information about all the sets um, of, uh, uh, of, of each and every set which has been predicted here. Okay. So... Um, the 393 sequence length it helps us to predict what is your alpha helix which is nothing but your edge here it also helps us to predict uh, the um, subtypes of your alpha helices which is your 310 helix as well as pi helix all right um, it also helps us to predict what is the beta bridge so if there is um, a beta bridge between uh, the two amino acids then it's able to predict that also it gives us your extended strand. So extended strand, nothing but here stands for uh, your beta sheets, all right, uh, which is E. In this case, you can see there's E here, there's E here, which is nothing but your beta sheet. There's also your beta turn, which is T, all right. So it also helps us to predict your turns. Uh, there is obviously your coils, all right, um, the coils or the loops, which helps us to interact between the, uh, uh, which joins the two secondary structures to each other. And there's always an ambiguous state or other states, like if there is any sort of a iron which is present in the sequence, then it's present in the ambiguous state or in the other states. But if you look at the um, uh, the different types of uh, uh, the number of secondary structures which is actually predicted uh, by it, okay, it has alpha helices, it has beta sheets, um, it has extended turns, it has random coils also. So there are a lot of things which uh, can be predicted. Now in this case, if you can see, um, it's predicting about 18% of alpha helix. It's predicting 18% of um, your extended strand, uh, that is your beta sheets. And here it's predicting 63% of your coil. Now, this is something which is very different if you look at your Chow Fasman. Okay, so Chow Fasman, uh, it predicted more of the alpha helical structure um, as compared uh, to uh, your uh, coils or uh, your uh, beta she uh, sheets. In this case, it's predicting 18-18% of your alpha helix as well as beta sheets and more percentage of your coil. Now the question comes here is which is right, is it Chow Fasman or is it GOR? So um, GOR is considered as a better secondary structure prediction method as compared to Chow Fasman. As I told you, it was the first ever, Chow Fasman was the first ever prediction tool which was actually developed. After that, GOR came and then there were many versions of GOR which actually came. So that's why uh, we'll consider GOR. So this reason, uh, this results, I'm sorry, is much um, better, I will say, as compared to how Chow Fasman works. Okay, and um, uh, yes, if you can see the number of coils which are here is a lot. That means uh, the stability um, is is uh, of of the protein is uh, is not that good as compared to uh, ones which is there. Okay. This gives us uh, what is the graphical representation. Okay, so how many are coils? How many alpha helices or beta sheets predicted by that? Uh, this just gives you another representation of how this thing works. So this is your residues from 0 to uh, I think 393. All right. It tells you how the different coils are, how the different beta sheets are in this case. All right. So uh, this 
is gor method okay so uh, as you can see gor gives you a much uh, better and um, uh, much detailed information about which are your various secondary structures um, um, in a, which uh, it, it helps us to predict your secondary structures in the protein in a much better way as compared to your chow phasmin so chow phasmin and gor uh, both of these are ab initio based methods all right, and as I said, what exactly is an ab initio based method is you incorporate the sequence, and uh, based on its prediction um, um, or its physiochemical properties, it actually predicts whether it's going to be an alpha helix or a beta sheet uh, or a coil. Uh, so that's why we generally go for another type of method, which is called as a homology based method. So, in homology based method, what actually happens is you uh, give the query sequence. Uh, the method or the tool basically matches that query sequence with all the known uh, sequences which it has in its database and based on the known database it tells us um, um, what exactly is the secondary structure. So I think uh, compared to both uh, homology based method uh, is obviously better because uh, it's comparing you with some, with some data or information which is known as compared to ab initio where you do not know anything. Right. So let's check how uh, our homology based uh, tool predicts the sequence for us. Mm -hmm.